Okay, so today I am going to demonstrate this drawing. I'm going to draw on this drawing and I'm going to demonstrate it. So let's see here. Last time that I was drawing on this was quite some time ago. And uh, this is about as far as I got. I see something in this and I'm going to see if I can suss it, get it, get it to come out. So working quickly, as I will, I'll pull this scene out because there is something in here. And I want it to live. So it will. It'll live. Via me. Via me. Oh, can't you see? It wants to be alive. He don't want to be trapped in this place for all time. I mean, who would? Who would indeed? Let me zoom in a little bit here. A boom. A boom de boom. Just like that. You can see how, how, I, how it goes. I don't know if I'm using the same pen as I started with this thing. It's okay. This is just a demo. Or is it? Some of my favorite drawings started out as just demos. And then they became something more. Alright. Yeah, I think that uh I used a different pen because this one has a little bit of a, a blue tinge and this one has a bit of a mm, a little bit more charcoal -y black, just pure black. But maybe when the ink dries here it'll become charcoal -y black. I know. I'm a little surprised if I use a different pen because this is the pen to use. It's been a while since I've drawn on this and I don't remember. This is one of the dangers of having too many types of pens around. That's why I like to stick to one. And this Bic has been... This is Bic. Bic. Your basic Blick. Blick. It's not a Blick. But it is a Bic. And it is basic. So your basic Bic. And uh, it works for me. It's fine. It's a good pen. And the reason it's good is because it's consistent. It hasn't decided to change its ink like Pilot did. I understand why they did it, but I still don't like it. Because it was nice. It was a really good pen. Good ink on Pilot pilot pen but now it's not and uh, I blame pilot but at the same time I can understand because I don't think ballpoint pen artists are their main main customers Bic however just happens to have the kind of ink that 
works for me. The action's a little different, or the the way the ink comes out is a bit different than Pilot. There's pros and cons to both. Well, now there's only pros with Pilot with a uh, Bic, which is I use it because the ink is good. Before there was something I preferred with the uh, with the Pilot. Something about the way it came out very smooth. And I could get really nice small detail. Yeah. Anyway. I think I can get really nice small detail with the smaller fine version. This is a medium version, but I don't really use the fine so much. Because this is adequate. It's good. More than adequate. It's a... Uh, it's high quality. Yeah. Big. More than adequate. Hmm. Okay. That looks pretty good for now. Yeah. Now let's try a peel. What I'd like to do now is actually fill in this area. I have been absent for a long time, probably half a year or so, something like that. And the reason is because I have, well, I had an art show and then I stopped uh, making my daily drawing sessions because I was getting ready for the art show. And I completed that in March in Tokyo. It was Tokyo Solo 3. Finished it. Uh, had my exhibition. It was my third one. Hence the three. Went well, considering that the weather was really bad. It was just raining the whole time. People came out regardless. Not as many as I would like, but for some reason the, the Solo 3 was nice. It was really the maybe my favorite show of the three that I had. I felt like people really looked at the art this time rather than just coming out to say hello and schmooze a bit. It was a little more serious of a show, which I really appreciated. So... Yeah, I... I how can I say? I had a momentum going there for like about eight months or so. Uh drawing every day, every weekday. I don't think I missed any days. It was interesting. I just kept at it. It was pretty consistent. My goal was to see if I could just get a bunch of people to subscribe apart from doing the actual art, which I was going to do anyway. And I did. And I worked on, I think I completed about five or so pieces in that time. It was a very productive time for me. Very nice. I enjoyed it as far as doing the video and, and the art in, in tandem. But then the show happened and I lost my momentum. Continue to do art, but I decided to paint rather than do the the ballpoint pen because I'd been wanting to do painting uh, as a a main as the the main outlet for my art with thinking that I could do more faster. 
because the ballpoint pen was taking a lot of time. I think uh, my biggest piece was hidden, and that took about a month or more. I don't remember how long it was hidden. It took, but it took a long time relative to the other drawings that I had done. Now here's the thing. Um, when I started to paint, it, my my assumption was that the painting was just going to go like, you know, quick. Because, you know, I'm covering large swaths, that word, of uh, paint or an area with paint. Well, little did I know that it would take a lot longer for me to get the results I wanted from the painting that I was working on. I decided to work on a really big piece like that, right? And I had worked on smaller pieces before and they did go fairly quickly, a little bit faster than this ballpoint pen business. But, you know, I started this painting called Museum about, I think I started it in April, April, May, June, July, August, I've been working on it almost half a year, and I'm about 50% done with it, so it is taking time, and I'm, I am working on it like every day, I started doing a lot of video for it, but it was just the same thing. Again and again and again, no change up really. And that's not, and it was taking just too much time to video for the, you know, for the uh, amount of work. The work to output ratio was um, not good enough to continue. That was my assessment. So I just stopped doing the videoing and just painted thinking that that would speed things up. It didn't. It's a slow going process. I'm enjoying it, but it's it's uh, it's just too slow to be something that I can feasibly make money off of at this time in my career, at this point in my journey, really. And the reason being is because if it's gonna take me one year, to do one drawing, painting, that is, then I will not survive unless I sell that painting for $50,000. What's the most expensive painting I sold? I don't know. I think I sold one for Wow, I thought I knew. No, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know why I don't know. I should know that, but I don't. But um not much. I mean relative to again to how much I've put into it. See the thing is is it takes time to do these things. That's why we charge what we charge. We, we artists. There's other reasons too, uh, why we charge what we charge. A lot of things factor in. How do you decide what you're going to charge? That is a great question. And I, first it's just intuition. You think, okay, well, I think that this painting is worth this much money. <clears throat> and then, uh, then you think about the materials, you know, the cost of that. The time, of course. Time is a big one. So for the drawings, uh, it is, of course, time. But the materials aren't anything. They're basically nothing. It's just a ballpoint pen. And this pen, I can draw maybe five or six big pieces with it. So it doesn't... It's, it's nominal. And uh, the material for the paper is uh, costs as much as paper costs. 
In this case, not even one cent for one piece of paper. The, the expense, however, is in the mat and the frame and the, um, the paint and the plexiglass that goes on top. That costs money, and I make those frames, so that also takes time. And the glue and the, the masonite that goes in the back. And the styrene that goes underneath the drawing. So all of that is pricey. So that factors in to the cost. So you see what's happening is that you have material costs. But really, should materials be the reason that we, we price our art the way that we do? Should it be the materials? really shouldn't because otherwise you know I just would sell the material here buy this this mat board buy this masonite so you don't do that right I put it together the cost of the materials is it factors into the cost of the painting only in an utilitarian sense not in a the emotional, the, the artistic reason. Why would you want to buy this? That's the question, right? Because you love it. You think the image is something that you want to keep. You treasure it. Oh, I see. So how much would you be willing to part to have it? See, there's a question. So then I ask myself, well, how much would I? want to um, get in order to part with it because I also it has value for me as well let's see of course it does many of these pieces I spend months on or weeks at least and in that time there's something I'm doing that is creating an image that comes from my mind and onto the page. No, actually, it's not in that order. It, it goes onto the page, then it goes into my mind, and then it goes onto the page. So, what I mean is I draw something and then I kind of adjust for it. And I keep adjusting. So I don't really know what it's going to look like until it's on the page. And then, like right now, I'm just adjusting for this area right in here. I didn't know it was going to look like this. I have some kind of an idea, but not much, really. So yeah, you put a lot of yourself into the, the art, the effort. It's the same with other forms of art that you put a lot into. But there is some differences. For example, you can put a lot of your effort into the story that you're going to tell, right? But those are just a series of words, so you know you can sell each copy of the book or the article at much lower cost because it's just the same, the same, the same. It's a copy, it's a copy, it's a copy. And of course I could sell copies of this as well. That's not the same as being the original. There's something about the artist's hand being on the piece that lends value to it. I'd much rather have an original Van Gogh than a copy. Because that dude touched it. And there's something to that. Digital doesn't have that. Digital art doesn't have that. And this is why I think digital art is not as valuable for purely artistic reasons as fine art. Digital art has its place, certainly. I, I do digital art, but it's not going to be in any gallery because you can never experience the original. But it does have its place. It has a certain look about it, uh, depending on the artist, of course. But the digital art I do one artist here 
looks different than the fine art that I do. All right, so what we have here, let's back out a little bit and see how it's going. Okay, so I've done this area right now. And a little bit in there as well. While I have it zoomed out, I'll just walk a little bit. Just back in a little later. Now here, I am not pressing very hard at all. And this is the trick with, uh, sometimes anyway, with ballpoint pen. How you get that sketchy look. The pen itself is, uh, the ink is an oil-based, it's not water-based, so you get this um, softer, almost pencil-like, whereas with the water-based ink you get, uh, well it's black or it's white, so it's binary. This one is much, much more analog looking. You know, so how to get all these shapes really just went quick. Just went, didn't really know what I was gonna do. I even made that sound. Okay. And here I am not pressing very hard at all. Nope. going in uh, in a cross direction from the previous um, ink lines. It's called cross hatching. All right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now I'm going in the same direction as the other one. One thing these pins are not super good at doing is stippling, which is just putting down a bunch of dots. It's not quite as clean as the water-based ink. But they are good for the, the stroke. Very good for that. Yeah. Very nice. Well, actually not very nice because it is a little bit, um, a little sketchy. It's on the sketchy side. Just simply because the paper quality is not so great. And also when I laid this down originally, I didn't intend to make this thing any more than just a, a sketch. Just a, what do you call it? Um, just a practice sketch. Still. Not sure where it's going to head. Am I going to finish this up and try and make it something that's worthy of being framed? This is always a question. What I'd like to do is do a lot more of these type of drawings where I'm just sketching mindlessly, really, with no direction. So you can just see how the, how the process is and the result of, of what I'm doing here. The difference really between this and something that I would think is more fleshed out, like a higher quality, is just time. You spend a little bit more time, go a little, go over a piece or an area, slow down maybe a bit, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you gotta speed up. Going fast has its own result. Okay. So I've done this area like that. Okay. I'm gonna go down here. I don't want to go more than 30 minutes, so I think this is a good amount of time. I 
I think I can finish this up in five minutes. 30 minutes seems like a pretty decent amount of time. Before uh, my previous drawing videos that I was making, I would do a lot of um, music overlay and uh, then editing it really intensely, like taking a lot of the little blips and the noises and things that background noises, taking that out, trying to make it as clean as I could. And you know what? That is a waste of time. It's not important to do all that. In fact, I've started to notice that I like the the natural sounds of videos. I don't want music overlay. And you know, for me, it was like I was playing it in that computer back there. So that was nice. Just I like playing the keyboards, but it does take time. And kind of needless. Nobody knew that was my music because I didn't say anything. Maybe people thought I just used the, the music that's available in the libraries. Nope. It's all from me. And that's fine that people don't know because that's not what I'm here to do in life is be a musician. Sometimes I wonder what that would have been like had I been using my artistic skills for audio rather than visual. It would have been that life. But there is only this life. Let me zoom in a little bit. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Yeah, and just before I wrap this up, let me just give this this bit up here just a little bit more of a a stroke session. So I'm gonna stroke this a bit more. And then as I said earlier, I go in the cross hatching. It's nice to do up in the edges here so you can really help push the, the ink right up onto the edge there. Yeah. So I'm about to close this up and being about 30 minutes long, this session of, um, what am I calling this? Demo? These are just demos. I can turn into something else, but I'm going to call this.